starting today, April 1st, the vaccine rollout is being extended to California residents ages 50 and over. And despite the millions who've already received the vaccine, many people are still hesitant to sign up for a dose and misinformation issues persist. The California Department of Public Health is working to get the right information out to the public and keep you informed. It's called Cal Hope. And epidemiologist Dr. Erica Pan is with us this morning with some updates and facts about the vaccine. Hi, doctor. Hello, good morning. We've been talking about the vaccine for months, and now that we're a few months into the new year, many still may not understand exactly how the vaccines work. Sure. So vaccines in general work by uh, providing uh, information for your immune system to react to and respond and be able to, when exposed again, fight against that infection in the future. And there are currently three vaccines that are being used here in the U.S. that have approval. Can you explain the differences between them? Sure. So there's three major vaccines, as you mentioned. There's the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, and those are both two doses, um, either three or four weeks apart. And then there's the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which is actually just one dose. Sometimes we call it the one and done vaccine. Uh, there's some other differences in the way they're stored. Um, so the Johnson & Johnson is easier to transport. Um, and of course, just the convenience of having one dose. But all of what's really important for everyone to know is that they're all effective and they're safe. Um, and again, we really need all Californians to get vaccinated to really move us beyond this pandemic. And it's great that you mentioned that they are all effective and safe because sometimes we were getting hung up on like, which vaccine did you get? What's the efficacy? And in, in normal times, we aren't even really uh, aware of the different brands, um, you know, outside of COVID for vaccines that we're receiving. So I think that is important that you pointed that out. Now we know starting today that vaccine eligibility has been relaxed. It's including everyone now ages 50 and older. When will everyone finally be able to get the vaccine? Yeah, we're really excited to share that as of April 15th, everybody 16 years of age and older, which is the age group that the vaccines are licensed for, um, is el are eligible for vaccine. That being said, it may take some time to schedule an appointment and get uh, those appointments, but everyone will be eligible and will be able to start being um, set up. We still will have many more people eligible than vaccines. Um, you know, we're getting uh, a little over 2 million a week and um, they're uh, so, you know, we're, we're still bouncing that, but we really want people to know again that it's safe, it's effective, and to definitely sign up when it's your turn. And there are privacy concerns around the vaccine. Are they doing anything with your information when you become vaccinated? People, you know, very private about their information. Yeah, great question. And uh, we want to assure everybody that we do have what we call a California immunization registry. And uh, we actually have been trying to get all vaccines, not just COVID vaccine in there. Um, but it, it uh, follows all the normal security and privacy that any medical records would have. And we are very, take all of that very seriously as far as uh, making sure all that data is confidential. It's really only um, there for other healthcare providers that might need to find out if somebody has been vaccinated and for us to look at our overall progress as a state on how many people are vaccinated and who's getting vaccinated. Dr. Pan, I think one of the most common questions is how does someone sign up to get the vaccine? And now that they've opened it up to 50 and older, this like this new big population that's going to be wondering, how do I do it? And it does take a little bit of initiative. You have to be a little bit proactive to sign up. Yeah, that is true. And I think we're getting better and better on that front. So the main way, especially those who have access to the internet, can go to My Turn and just sort of Google uh, My Turn in California. And you can sign up there and put in your name, uh, your age, your zip code, and it'll help you uh, look for places that you can get vaccinated in your area. Um, there are also many other ways. If your healthcare provider um, is reaching out actually to some people, or you can reach out to your healthcare providers, more and more pharmacies are coming online. So CVS and Rite Aid and uh, Walgreens are all, and you know, increasingly we're um, getting more and more pharmacies online. There are a lot of community clinics that now have vaccines. So there are a lot of different ways, but the most central way to look is my turn. Uh, and then we're also working really hard, um, you know, because we know that people don't all have the internet access. There's a phone number you can call um, to also make an appointment. And there's uh, many different languages that uh, we have uh, providers to help schedule that. 
Um, and then we're really working in communities and in partnership with local health departments and community-based organizations and community clinics to work with uh, people on the ground that already work in communities to help do outreach and also help people enroll them to get those appointments made. Dr. Pan, can you clarify if there's a right or wrong place to get the vaccine? People may think, oh, I have to go to my health care provider or I can't utilize some of these other options. I mean, what's the truth when it comes to that? I think, you know, for the most part, I think for most people, really the, the first appointment you can make and the most convenient for you is really the best answer. I think for people that do have a history of any kind of uh, severe allergies or what we call anaphylaxis to uh, anything in the past, it probably is better to go to a, a brick and mortar clinic as opposed to one of these mass vaccination sites. But all of these mass vaccination sites do have, you know, people on site who can deal with any kind of reactions. Um, it's very standard to wait for, you know, 15 minutes or so after the vaccine. And the really important thing to know about this is there, there are these rare um, responses sometimes with a, an allergic reaction, but all of them have responded well to medication, sort of, you know, people, most people have heard about an EpiPen, right? So it's the equivalent of that. And all of the people who have had those reactions have actually responded well and are fine. So um, it's un, you know very unfortunate when it does happen, but it's very rare. And um, certainly the benefits of the vaccine and not getting COVID far, far outweigh any risks of the vaccine. Well, that is really good to know. And finally, doctor, why are you advising people to get vaccinated, especially for those people who may be hesitant or if they think I'm already wearing a mask, I'm social distancing, I'm going to be fine? Yeah, it's incredibly important for us to reach what we call community immunity or herd immunity as a state and as a country. And the way we can get there is for as many people as possible to get vaccinated. It's also really important for people to know um, there's really encouraging data for 12 to 16 year olds. So we do think that will be available in the near future. But our kids, zero to 12 year old, still we don't have a vaccine quite yet. They're starting to do trials and we um, are optimistic that those will be um, you know, available later in the year or early in 2022. But in the meantime, we all need to actually get vaccinated to help protect our kids who um, definitely have not had a serious of uh, infection or illness, but we want to get what, to what we call again, community immunity to make sure we can move beyond this pandemic. If we all wanna get back to our normal you know, and also just on a very personal level, you know, uh, one of the best experiences I just had was my parents have been vaccinated and they were able to hug my kids again. And, you know, really, I've been also talking about this is this is the pathway to hugs, right? We really want to get back to being able to be social again. So the more people we can vaccinate, the more we can be normal in all settings. Very good, Dr. Pan. We, it's always good to get the right information out there. And if you want to learn more, you can visit vaccinateall58.com.